Let's turn to the Republicans now. Scott Walker leading in the polls in Iowa, last ones I saw anyway. Uh, he was at a forum sponsored by the Koch brothers yesterday, and I've heard a lot of Democrats talking about this bite. Let's play it. Is President Obama a Christian? <laughs> You're not going to get the different answers than I said before. I said, I, I don't know. I presume he is by his comments in the past, but I've never asked him about that. And as someone who's a believer myself, I don't presume to know someone's uh, beliefs uh, about uh, whether they follow Christ or not, unless I've actually talked with them and understand that. But he said he has, so I'll take his his word. You're shaking your head. What's that's, that's that, What's the problem with that answer? Uh, no, it's, it's disgusting. Listen, as as a professing Christian, that is listen. That is a dog whistle. That is as close to fighting words as you're going to get. In other words, you're going to have to talk to all 320 million Americans to find out uh, if, if we're a Christian. If someone is a professing Christian, as I am, as this president is. That is all that is required in our faith. And for him to, oh, well, I don't know, he's tap dancing around. What it does, it's a dog whistle saying that this guy is not honest. But worse than that, he's saying he's not honest because, again, there's that part of the base. He's not really an American. He's not really a Christian. He's really a Muslim. And he's playing to that on the sly. It's disgusting. And people are very offended by it. I, I suspect, Governor Barber, you don't agree with that assessment. <laughs> well, let's start off as the news guy asked him about it. Mike Allen. This is not like he's making a speech. Right. Like Hillary Clinton talking about the right to rise is not this and trying to take her whole speech to, to attack Jeb Bush. He got to ask a question. I am a evangelical Christian. You don't know that. You don't know what's in my heart. And if, if I take you at your word that it, you're a Christian. And that's what we're supposed and to that's, do. And that's all we're and supposed that's to do. And that's all he did. He but says, I take him at his word. Brianna, didn't Hillary Clinton give a very similar answer when Steve Croft on 60 Minutes asked the same question back in 2008 when they were in the middle of this primary battle? I, I recall her saying, like, he is a Christian. I take him at his word. You know, as far as I know, I mean, I remember Obama people complaining about her answer. We were mad too. then too. Because we were mad then. <laughs> mad then too. And it speaks, I think. Let's talk big picture, Scott Walker here. It speaks to what I think may be one of the biggest problems of his candidacy, and that is answering questions. He has struggled repeatedly with this. This question that he answered here about whether the president is a Christian, and he says he is. He goes to church, Christian church. This isn't the first time that he's sort of messed up this question, at the very least bumbling through this question, well, the answer to this question. He, back answer. in That's right. Back in February, he was asked about this. But it's not just on this issue. In February, he was asked about evolution. He was asked about foreign affairs. And he outright said he was punting on them, that he didn't want to talk about it. This is a, this is a weakness that Scott Walker will have to confront to be a very serious candidate. So we're all very excited about Thursday night's Republican debate. Let's do a quick uh, around the table about what you're looking for, what's a, a key thing that you're looking for in the debate. I'll be looking at Scott Walker and how these rivals handle him. He is the front runner in Iowa. He has been the front runner all year. Mike Huckabee led in the polls with likely caucus goers throughout 2014. Scott Walker came in and took that title in January. So he, he's a soft target. He has never been punched from the right before. So it'll be interesting to see how these, these rivals deal with him. Interesting. What are you going to be looking for? I'm actually looking at Marco Rubio. I, I think, listen, a lot of this stuff is, is snowflakes and soap bubbles. The long-term future of the Republican Party is in the hands of Rubio and people like him. He's young. He's a fresh face, not like Jeb. He's a real candidate, unlike Trump. And frankly, he's got foreign policy experience, not like Walker. I want to see, can he break in and break out? Because honestly, he's the danger for us. If you're a Democrat, you're looking at Marco Rubio, you're saying, this is the guy we hope somehow gets snuffed out. We don't have to deal with this guy this cycle or any other cycle. What are you going to be looking I'm for? I'm going to look for discipline. I mean, this is going to be hard, probably be disappointing for the public, because 10 people get to talk a total of 10 minutes each over a two-hour period of time. So discipline and short answers, staying. And a lot of these people have real records of accomplishment. It's hard to. Talk about what they want to talk about. But the big question for me is, most important question, will Donald Trump say to the Republican audience, I will not run as a third-party candidate. I will not run as an independent. I understand what happened in 1992 that Ross Perot gave the Clintons the White House, and I will not do that because he has no chance to win our nomination as long as he keeps saying, well, I might. I might. Interesting. Brianna, very quickly. Let's be honest. A lot of people are tuning in to see if there's drama here. If this with Donald Trump being the wild card is some political version of Thunderdome, I think, is what they're <laughs> looking for. I'm curious if he shows up and is 
very serious, does have some discipline, if he is proficient in specifics when it comes to foreign policy, and also if a number of these Republicans make a play for these disaffected uh, voters in the Republican Party that Donald Trump is attracting. Very interesting. Well, I know we're all going to be watching. Brianna Keeler, Governor Haley Barber, Van Jones, Jennifer Jacobs of the Des Moines Register. Thanks so much.